My fellow Americans, you've probably heard that some of our political opponents are very concerned about the state of our economy. And I have to tell you, I don't blame them. If I were in their shoes, I'd be worried too. You see, April marks the 65th straight month of the longest peacetime expansion in U.S. history. In that time, we've created nearly 16 million jobs. They're better and higher paying too, which is one reason why the real income of the average American has been rising steadily for the last five years. The percentage of Americans employed is the highest in history, and the unemployment rate continues to drop down to its lowest level since 1974. Since 1980, U.S. manufacturing has increased its productivity almost three times as fast as in the seven previous years. Inflation remains low, while the gross national product growth this year and last has exceeded even our own optimistic expectations. Somehow, our opponents have convinced themselves that this record growth, vibrant job creation, and more productive economy is bad news. And they say it's all the fault of Reaganomics. Well, I'd love to take the blame or credit as the case may be, but that just wouldn't be fair. All we did was get government out of your way. We cut taxes, inflation, and regulations, <clears throat> and we let the American people take back their own economy and run with it. In their effort to prove that this economic boom we're in is really a bust, our opponents have had to weave some pretty tall tales. One of those they tell about America <clears throat> is that we're threatened by foreign investment. Well, to paraphrase what Joe Friday used to say in Dragnet, let's just look at the facts, ma'am. Yes, foreigners now hold about 12% of U.S. public debt, but that's down from 16% in 1978. Foreign resources also accounted for 10% of total credit market funds last year, exactly the same as in the mid-1970s. But even so, foreign investment isn't something to be scared of. It brings us a host of benefits, including jobs and lower interest rates for all Americans, whether they be home buyers, small businessmen, consumers, or farmers. Writer economist Warren Brooks makes a very good point. What difference does it make, he asks, whether a Japanese company owns a factory in Detroit or in Marysville, Ohio? Does someone seriously think they might dismantle it brick by brick and ship it back to Japan in the middle of the night? I wonder if the workers in those plants think foreign investment is such a bad thing, or the nearly three million other Americans employed by foreign firms in the United States whose payrolls add up to more than $70 billion and that pay about $8 billion in income taxes to the United States Treasury. The fact is we live in a global economy. We can be glad people in other countries choose to invest in the vibrant and growing U.S. economy rather than their own nations. I don't blame them. I think America's a pretty good investment, too. Right now, however, there's a trade bill working its way through Congress that could go a long way toward making America's bad investment for Americans and foreigners alike. At this moment, we've not seen the final bill, but from what we already know, we still have very, underlined very, serious reservations. We'll continue to work with the full conference and the congressional leadership to clear up these problems. But the bottom line is this. I will veto a bad trade bill before I will let a bad trade bill veto our economic expansion. Another important matter facing the nation today is the INF Treaty, which I signed with General Secretary Gorbachev at our Washington summit meeting last December. This treaty will, for the first time, eliminate an entire class of U.S. and Soviet missiles. We called this the zero option when I first proposed it in 1981. The treaty also requires the Soviet Union to make far greater reductions now in its missile systems to reach equality with us. This is an historic precedent, and we will apply it to other arms negotiations as well. Finally, the treaty has the most comprehensive verification regime in arms control history. This, too, is an important precedent for other negotiations, particularly those on strategic arms, where an even more elaborate verification regime will be required. In sum, this treaty represents what can be accomplished when we negotiate from a position of strength. Action on it is now up to the United States Senate, which must give its advice and consent to ratification. I hope it will be given expeditious consideration by the full Senate and I urge all senators to provide their advice and consent without reservation. It is a solid treaty, and it enhances the security of our country and our allies. Until next week, then, thank you for listening, and God bless you.
Yeah, right on. Okay, Dick. Good. Okay, Dick, thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, that's the first time in all of these years of this broadcast that I have ever had to clear my throat. Mr. President, nice to see you again, and I'm uh, agency secretary. I have Frank Walton's old job. Oh. But I also was uh, director of the Department of Commerce the last two years of your administration in Sacramento, <laughs> so it's great to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> well, I, I feel good. Better than I should, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mr. John Ham nice on our honor. executive staff. Thank you. Nice Association. To see you. Nice to see you. This is Secretary Treasurer of the Association, Mr. Larry Slycorn. Hello, there. nice to see you. Of course, you know Barney. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy in the end? Bad pity here. He keeps hanging around, right? Uh, I've seen him so clean <laughs> since I've been here. <laughs> we do there we go. Rough work, that <laughs> Governor and uh, Gloria Duke Majin send you their best, and, uh, oh, yeah. and they want uh, they wanted me to tell you that he's not looking for a house in uh, Washington. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, the purpose of this uh, gathering here today is to present the first badge of the American spirit. You've been chosen as a recipient of this badge because of your personal commitment to patriotism here in the United States, for your commitment to our armed services and making sure that they're the strongest fighting forces on the planet. The fact that we can now negotiate for, for peace from a strength of undeniable, or from a position of undeniable strength. Uh, we appreciate your personal courage, the fact that you recovered from the bullets of an assassin, you've recovered from your battle with cancer, and truly, you've been an inspiration to Americans everywhere um, and, and it's been the spirit of freedom here in the United States. I'd like to read from the medal now, honoring Ronald Reagan, statesman, for his creative ingenuity as manifested in his inspirational leadership of this republic as 40th president of the United States and in his contributions to the rebirth of the founding father's spirit of American patriotism. Oh my goodness. I am greatly honored, and I thank you all very much. Thank you. Most appreciative of this. What I'd like to do now is to take the metal out of the cover here. On the front, on the front of this badge is the American Eagle, which reminds us that it flies best on its own wings in a spirit of freedom. And on the back, you have the logo of the California Association of Highway Patrolmen and the logo for Pacific Bell whose grant made this medal possible. Well, well, I'm deeply grateful and most honored to have this. And, you know, I'm really doing it, looking at it this way so she can get a picture of the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I, I want to thank you all, and I want to also tell you, you, I'm sure you're probably aware of this already, that in all the eight years here as governor, there was nothing in the whole job that I was any more proud of her or as proud of as I was at the California Highway Patrol. You are an exceptional body in law enforcement throughout the nation. And going across the country to the other job, I found that out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. If you want to put that back here, we'll... Mr. President, we have one we more question. Yeah, I think.
I understand, Mr. President, that you have one of our commemorative revolvers from our 50th anniversary. Yes. A year ago, a little over a year ago, almost two years ago, we uh, came out with another edition of a commemorative revolver, which is the revolver that we carry on duty every day. And what we'd like to do today is present you not only with a revolver, but with a belt buckle from the California Association of Highway Patrolmen in the, in the uh, presentation case. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> As you know, I sort of have a fondness for Whoops. Whoops. That yeah, that's fine. a very, I very fine weapon. I can't there just permanently. No. Right? Oh, boy. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, uh, that's great. I just did that to take a look and make sure. <laughs> oh. Oh, my golly. That's the standard Indeed. service weapon, not a... Not a specially made up one. Nothing all the It's the exact carry. one that we carry, except for the inscription, of course, uh, on the barrel. Well, I'm very pleased and proud to have this. Thank you. Very You're very much. welcome. Well, <laughs> it's a beautiful day. I said this. I should have said these. <laughs> well, we hope that you uh, display them in with pride. Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, I just have a sinking or kind of a feeling that I'm not so sure about the gun as I am about the uh, other that uh, that presidential library where they're projecting vast crowds will be going through. Uh, Great. I think it should be on display there. That would oh, be the perfect so spot. We'd love to see it there. Love to see it, it there. Be. Yeah, you may never get her back. <laughs> Barney's got one of his own. Now. He doesn't need that one. <laughs> Um, yes. a group of people that you wanted to with the president? Yes, if I could, I'd like to get some pictures with uh, with our entire group here, if we could, or individually, right. whatever you would like Maybe to do. Maybe we better with. move around where we are then, because... Well, let's do it here, because the oh. sun's getting bright and the people are Oh, good. Well, I was afraid about you shooting into the sun. <laughs> can we, John, can we I'm maybe set that somewhere and give that to someone to hold? I've got pictures already, so... Stand behind. Look how short it comes. I'm standing downhill from it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I like this picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fly got me. Well, the fly's done. Okay. Good. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's another funny thing of nature. <laughs> it was about the second or third day that we were here. Not a nap in the sense. <laughs> and the next morning, just yeah. the, right the, the, the weather. Yeah. They, they're where they come from are the interstices on that the bark of the oaks. They're in there. Is that right? Oh, is and that that's right? That's where they kind of remain through the bad weather and everything. And then it really became spring, and all of a sudden here they were. We thought maybe they're the political platform. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> a matter of fact, uh, uh, so far I've only got one more day here to uh, uh, to keep my record <laughs> but every time every vacation that we've had here I managed to swallow one before the so I'm wondering if I'm going to break the habit uh, <laughs> Mr. President I'm sure everybody wants to impose upon you but my hero Barney is around here somewhere here he is and I wonder could I get a picture with you and Barney you sure could oh, okay I'd appreciate that very much <laughs> this, come in here be sorry. Oh, no. no. <laughs> he says he's my mentor. He tied he many years ago. I've been with the patrol 30 years, but. Good. I don't ruin the Thanks camera by going Thank you, sir. I appreciate that very much. Morning. Morning. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, you bet, yeah. Commissioner. Fine. I'm sure maybe John or they would. When, uh, Mr. That's Go ahead, John. When you move back to Southern California, how much time do you think you'll be spending up here? Well, I have a hunch that Nancy and I will be arguing about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll compromise somewhere between. Well, we'll be regular visitors when, when we, before I went there. I'll answer uh, that as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> we used to come up for several days and, and frequently, you know, we, we didn't live here. We, we'd come up and uh, the rest of the time was in town. and. Usually I was out of town making speeches someplace, but uh, no, I figure it'll be that way. Probably several days every month. Yeah, come on, beautiful spot. Oh, I claim it casts a spell. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, uh, in 1975, I had the honor of receiving the Medal of Valor from you when you were governor of the state of California. And at the presentation, they took pictures of 
my wife, myself, and you. And if you would autograph these for me as President of the United States, it would be a great honor. Well, I'd be very pleased to. I don't know if this will write on there or not, but uh, <laughs> if not, I'll leave them with you and you can send them to me after they're autographed if you would prefer to do that. All right. But uh, it would be a great honor for me. Well, now, what are both your first names? Well, here? Tom and Chris. Tom and Chris, C-H-R-I-S. C-H-R-I-S, that's correct. It's not going to write on there, I don't think. Yep, there it goes, I oh, think. Okay. Do so well That's there. fine. I believe if anybody has a felt pen. I did. I had one. I, it's in the car. Dennis, here's your felt pen. Boy, how about right that? Great. Oh boy. Oh, that's <laughs> even better. Mm -hmm. Yep. You want a little? There you go. Sir. Now I can ride. You want a to ride oh, it? thank you. Yeah, I'll go right over there. This one. Oh, okay. That was in. Uh, when was that? Uh, 1975. 75. So 15 years later, you get a monograph. That's right? exactly right. He hasn't changed a bit. No. <laughs> well, Tom's changed Tom. a bit, but not the president. <laughs> Suit anymore. Oh, you don't have that suit anymore. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> you never hear your suit. But... Yeah, they're all for. Uh, if, if you would, I wish. Mm -hmm. you, I hate to impose upon you, but uh, it was a very special day in my life, and uh, as is this. Well. Try to make things a little different. There we go. These, uh, this picture is of Dean Lanza, who was our commissioner at that time, and uh, of course, and Frank Walton with the long sideburns. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> that picture. Remember those those years? <laughs> we were. What, what, what if I leave off want the names? This or how do you, how do you want this one done? Just to, yeah, just to, the same way it would be fine, Mr. President. Just uh, Tom and Chris. Uh, oh, all right. Reagan. The people I'm always. I always remember that time about back when I was still doing movies and television and everything. I was walking down Fifth Avenue in New York, street crowded and people back and forth, and all of a sudden, about 30 feet ahead of me, a fellow stopped, pointed his finger at me, and he says, I know you, I see you in that movies and other, and all of this, and everybody stopped, and they kind of formed two lines, and he came down the middle, fumbling in his pocket there and I'm standing there waiting for him and he's going on to me about pictures and the television and everything gets right up to me and sticks out the pen and a piece of paper and says Ray Milland. <laughs> <laughs> so I signed Ray Milland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. You have to take a picture of your picture here. <laughs> uh, could we get a picture with just uh, Larry, uh, Bob, and you know, I'll stand here in the back. That's okay. Just my executive board. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, you've been more than gracious. Well, listen, we certainly appreciate this opportunity in this audience. Well, you've honored me greatly. <laughs> That award and I well, I couldn't go to anybody finer. Most appreciative. Mr. President, uh, last time I shook your hand, you were governor, and Harold Sullivan was the commissioner. I was his assistant. <laughs> you remember Harold? Oh, my gosh, yes, <laughs> yes. And that was, I think, 1970, or thereabouts, or 70. Yeah, yeah around in that period of time, I would think. Yeah. But it's so, so good to see you again. Last time I shook your hand, you signed the legislation that has made the Highway Patrol salaries right up there at parity with the major law enforcement organization. You did that at the groundbreaking on our academy. You're always welcome to come back. The Academy's complete. We'd love to have you as a guest up there. We're very proud of it. <laughs> we we'll we'll never get the chance. Ed Meese uh, told me, well, last time I saw him back in Washington, he said he wanted to come. He was there at the groundbreaking. He said, when I got to Sacramento again, I want to come out and see it. So don't let him feed you lunch there, though. <laughs> <laughs>